So if you're trying to figure out the best podcast recording software in 2025, I have literally been down this rabbit hole for over 10 years at this point. I used to use Skype with the Ecamm setup back in the day, which by the way, rest in peace to Skype, it just actually shut down for good this year. Then of course I went on to try Zoom, Squadcast, Zencaster, StreamYard, and even Anchor. But I gotta tell you about this one platform that actually works, because here's the thing. I've had recordings disappear. I've had guests spending 20 minutes trying to figure out how to get into the recording software. I've had an hour conversation where you think you're recording the whole time and then you're not. And it is the worst feeling ever, especially when you've just had a conversation that you're really proud of. So that's why I want to show you Riverside because I've used it for five years at this point and I've gotten to see it evolve back when it first started out and how it has continued to meet the demands of everyday podcasters like me and you. Okay, so first thing is recording quality, which is pretty insane because you can shoot up to 4K in Riverside versus something like 720p with Zoom in many cases cases. And you probably are familiar with when you try to crop in and zoom in and stretch out something that was filmed in 720p, it looks pixelated. It doesn't look really high quality in post-production. The next part of the recording quality that's pretty impressive is the fact that everything records locally first before it gets sent to the cloud. This is very useful if you or your guests are in spots where, you know, internet isn't the best or it's a little spotty. What's going to happen is if if you record it on something like Zoom, all those errors, all those connection issues kind of get baked into your recording versus with Riverside, it's recording locally to your device. And then after the recording is done, it gets uploaded to the cloud. So you have individual speaker tracks, you have individual video tracks. It's an editor's dream. If it's very customizable and if you're working with someone else, they will really appreciate that you have this versus something like Zoom. The audio is 48 kilohertz, which is way better than most platforms. And they have this magic audio audio thing where it cleans up the background noise really well. It edits the audio quality as if you spent some real time on it. And it only takes one click to actually do it. And this feature has improved a lot over the past few years. Now let's talk about mobile. I always recommend recording podcasts on desktop whenever possible, whether you're using Riverside, Zoom, or any other tool. But if you or your guests need to record while you're on the go, Riverside actually has a mobile app that you can use. And the recording quality ends up being being sometimes way better than what you would use on your laptop because a lot of times you're using you know an iPhone that has a very high quality camera when you are using the mobile app so you will see a high quality improvement when you do that just make sure that you or your guest turn your phone sideways so it's filming in horizontal versus vertically so that it can be used for your you know the video version of your YouTube video, for example. Now, this has also improved drastically over the years since it first dropped. There's of course still vulnerabilities with the mobile app here and there, but honestly, many of them don't even have to do with the app itself. For example, one of my clients, he has a guest who lives out on a farm and doesn't really have great internet connection or data, right? So Whenever he goes on podcasts, he drives out to this parking lot where there's, you know, these businesses have Wi-Fi's and he uses his internet connection, uh, you know, on his 5G data, or he will use, you know, the Wi-Fi of some of these businesses. And so, of course, when you are switching back and forth and you don't have strong internet connection in the first place, that's going to have an impact on your output. But thankfully, in my client's case, the worst that it happened to be was a little bit of pixelation when the connection strength was a little lower in these recordings. So there was never a huge, huge disruption, you know, like you may get with other apps. Overall, it is a huge win that there is a mobile app in the first place because your guests are going to be the ones who probably use this maybe more than you, and they will be grateful that there is an option that makes them look better than even their laptop in a simpler way. But again, the multi-track recording is a game changer because if your guest is eating chips or there's a dog barking in the background or there's a loud siren that's going by, you can actually fix those things in their track without really touching yours. This has saved me so many times, especially when I'm working in more complex software like Premiere Pro. Oh, and everything is backing up automatically. 
So you don't need to upload your files afterwards to Dropbox or Google Drive. Everything stays in one place, which is extremely valuable when you're trying to stay organized, whether you're working with a team or whether you're operating this solo, in which case being organized goes a much longer way. So after you are done recording, all of your files associated with that recording are in one place and you can share the project link with whoever you want, or you can just simply use it to jump back in and resume certain projects way faster. I've never really lost a recording with this thing, which I can't say about some of the other platforms. If there has ever been an issue, what's really cool is that there is usually a project ID or a recording ID that you are able to copy and give Riverside support. And they're usually able to work their magic and do whatever they got to do to hopefully save or bring back your recording if you ever face any issues. And, you know, thankfully I haven't had to do that too much but when it has come up, Riverside support has been pretty awesome in that case. Okay, now let's talk about guest experience. I have to say that for this reason alone, it might be worth getting Riverside in many cases, just because of how professional, how clean, how easy to use and intuitive everything looks. You know, you don't have to go back and forth with your guests like, oh, do you know how to use this? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Everything is usually pretty smooth from the start and Riverside has become just as common as tools like Zoom, where if your guest has been on a podcast before, chances are that they have come in contact with Riverside and it just feels feels really clean and professional as you're using it, similar to the vibe that you would have in a real studio. And look at this interface. It's actually intuitive. It's something that your guests can figure out. You're not going to spend 20 minutes teaching them how to actually use it. And it's something that I've been able to teach clients of mine of all ability levels, and they have gotten the hang of it with no issues. Plus, you get this chat feature. You have reactions and things like that that you can do during the recording or when you are going live. That's pretty cool because you can go live on five different platforms once you set it up if you really want to. Or let's say that you want to have a producer speak to you or your guest without the rest of the audience hearing it or without it getting baked into recording. You can actually do stuff like that with Riverside. Okay, now I want to dive into the AI editing stuff. So this part is actually pretty cool. You can edit by editing the transcript. So text-based editing, it's the idea of editing a video like a Google Doc. When you delete some of the text, that text actually gets deleted from the video. This dramatically speeds up the process when you are removing retakes and scanning your recording for errors. Now this magic clips feature is a game changer because as soon as you are done recording, you don't even have to click anything for this to begin generating magic clips for you. It will find the best moments and highlights and it will turn them into vertical clips and it will even add any brand guidelines that you had. For example, I want to add this outro to the end of each video that is a vertical format. I want to make sure that the font is always, you know, this style. I want to make sure it's always this color. All those things get remembered and baked in automatically, which, you know, even if not all 10 clips that it outputted are perfect, you'd be surprised at how many are good to go without needing to mess with anything at all. The fact is that it saves you tons of time, and at the very least, it gives you a strong starting point. The AI voice stuff is kind of wild because you can generate narration in your voice, and I've had a couple use cases at this point with clients where it actually makes sense, and I was glad to have this feature because what you can do is instead of if you flubbed a word or a couple words in your recording and you know you just want to sound better or say it differently instead of having to re-record a voiceover and then upload that file and patch it in which used to be more complicated before all you really have to do is use the ai tools to swap out that word or swap out certain fragments in your edit. Of course, with anything that is AI, if you use this for minutes and minutes on end, or you try to generate long passages, you know, from scratch, it's not going, it's going to sound a little bit robotic-y, right? And so it's best used when you are using it to fix certain things and swap out certain words. But you can, of course, test your heart out and see what it sounds like when you, you know, you push this feature to the max. I always find it fun to play around with it because even though 
It might only be great for swapping out a couple words here and there. It's a taste of what is to come in the future and what will be possible in the future with this type of voice generation. Now, when it comes to making things look professional, I'm very impressed by the branding features that they have available. So being able to choose the caption style, the fonts, the colors, even certain outros, as I mentioned, like a stinger, a three second stinger at the end of your short form clips, being able to decide some of these things that make your stuff look more polished pretty much once. And then it will just repeat that process until, you know, you decide to change it or alter it. And those little aspects really help speed up the workflow without sacrificing the visual output. And certain things that you would manually have to do in complex softwares like Premiere, where, you know, laying out where the speakers go, is the speaker, you know, going to be full screen or are they taking up half screen? All of these things can be done automatically and it looks really professional, like you had a human editor working on this the whole time. Now, here's what I like about the live streaming aspect. You can stream to multiple desktops destinations while still recording in higher quality locally. So I had a client who, you know, we helped grow from 10,000 to over 500,000 subscribers. And she did this regularly where she would go live several times a week. But of course, what you wanted was to be able to take those lives, clean them up and repackage and re-upload them as individual videos. And so sometimes we did this with 30 minute stuff, 60 minute stuff, 10 minute stuff. And the fact that you have that option here to be be able to do that is pretty awesome because you might be streaming in lower quality depending on where you are streaming to but to be able to have that crisp high quality file afterwards where you can use these ai tools use the text-based editing and you know squeeze more juice out of the work that you put in is pretty awesome so here's why i think riverside beats the competition most people start out with zoom right but the thing is that zoom compresses everything so your video quality is whatever your internet can handle at that time with stuff like StreamYard, Zencaster, Squadcast, all of these tools can maybe do the recording, but then you're on your own for editing. And even with tools from Spotify for creators, you know, the stuff that they had for recording, it was only piecemeal. They did kill it off at the end of last year. Who knows if they'll bring it back, but it was very like you can do one thing, but you still need another tool to accomplish, you know, the rest of the parts. And so instead of needing 10 different pieces of software to accomplish the same three goals, Riverside does the recording, editing, clips, everything in one place. Is it the cheapest? No, but if your time is worth anything, it pays for itself pretty quickly. Zoom is still a great free option that can get the job done, but I still think it's worth comparing against Riverside since they have a free trial. If you want to try it, I've got a discount code Pod Mahal. It gets you 15% off any pro plan. Links in the description. Give it a shot. The free trial will show you exactly what I'm talking about.